you can still hear me. You are speaking, but I cannot hear you. One minute. One minute. Speak now. Speak. 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 I cannot hear you. Remove the remove the microphone. I cannot hear you. Wow. No, I cannot. How did you use this on Sunday? Okay, remove remove the remove the microphone. Remove the earphone. Try it on its own. Or if it's not fixed properly. Because if you can hear me, I should be able to hear you. Your your microphone is not coming here. this now speak it's not coming I don't understand okay and we are already out of time because we have to go live let me go live
to God. Thank you for all that you have done in righteousness. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your peace. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. You are God most high. 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 Father, we thank you. How excellent is your name. How marvelous is your name. How glorious is your name. How beautiful is your name. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Glorious God. Majestic God. Excellent Father. Blessed be your holy name. We thank you for this evening. We thank you for this time. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your kingdom. We thank you. We thank you. You are worthy. 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 Malibra gada bush kilibra hatale bazige gige de bolo brahantale. La da bush kilibre gige de le yama kabatan de le bos kikikikikitele moro gugutole yaba katabi la brehende. La da bush kilibre gige de le bosaki kakata maya makaba libre gige de bolo boso kikikikikitele yama kabashan de libre gide. Rabosh kilibre hantalia. We bless you. We bless you. You are fire and omega. We worship you alone. You are worthy to be praised. You are. And Omega, we worship you alone. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all. You are great, you are good, you are God, you are King, you are mighty, you are glorious, you are excellent in all your ways, you are glorious in all your ways. We just thank you, Father. We bless your holy name, we give you all the praise, we celebrate you, we celebrate your majesty, we celebrate you, we celebrate your majesty, we celebrate you, we celebrate your majesty. We thank you for our day, we thank you for this hour, we thank you for our gathering, we thank you for our coming together, we thank you for your peace that guards our heart, we thank you for your joy and your gladness, we thank you for your mercy and your peace that sustains. 
sustains us. We thank you. 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 Ma liba gada bosh ke libre ke dele bro onto le yama kabasha libra gada le bosu ki kalibre monto le la bodo bosh ke libre ke dele. We just want to thank you. We are grateful for the life that we have in you. We are grateful for the grace, O oh God, that you have accorded us. We are grateful, O oh Lord, for the peace that we find in you. We are grateful, O oh God, for your strength, for your peace, for your mercy. We are grateful for your protection, for your provision. We are grateful, O oh God, that you have kept us as a family, as a nation, as a people. We are grateful, O oh God, that in our going out and our coming in, you have been our God, you have been our help, you have been our strength, you have been our light, you have been our peace, you have been our joy. We are grateful to you for every light affliction that has faced us in our life, for every challenge, O oh God, that has come our way. My God, my God, you have made it to walk a bigger, better, my God, glorious weight of glory, Lord making known your power your wisdom your glory your power your wisdom your glory lord making manifest your great wisdom in our life your great purpose in our life we are grateful to you thank you for making all things to work together for our good thank you for bringing all things together in spite oh god of the challenges the tribulation oh my god in spite of the pain the weariness the discouragement in spite of the turbulence in spite of the deep and the height that we have to contend with lord you make all things work together for our good and we are grateful we are grateful tonight lord we are grateful tonight we come as grateful children we come as grateful children we come as a grateful people we come as a grateful nation we enter your court with praise and your house with thanksgiving we come to your presence with thanksgiving and we come into your court with praise we are grateful unto you we are grateful unto you for you are good your mercies endure forever we bless you mighty god we bless you mighty father we bless you mighty god we bless you mighty father we bless you mighty god we bless you mighty father hallowed be your name hallowed be your name hallowed be your holy name Lebo do bosh ke libra hanta leba lebo go go soke ke 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 te mo ziga gada lebo se ke te we bless you jiwa yawe eh jiwa yawe jiwa yawe jiwa You are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. You are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. You are Yahweh. 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 Alpha and Omega. You are Yahweh. Alpha and Omega. You are Yahweh, Alpha, Omega. You are Yahweh, Alpha, and Omega. And so, Father, we bless you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. We celebrate you. We magnify you. We adore you. We celebrate you. We magnify you. We adore you. We celebrate you. We magnify you. We adore you. You are Yahweh. You are Jesus. You are great. You are good. You are kind. You are marvelous. You are glorious. You are gracious. We thank you. Thank you for a day like this. Thank you for a time like this. Lord, we bless you. Even as we come into your presence, we ask that your glory, your power will dwell in our midst. We ask, O oh God, that your grace will avail for us. We ask, O oh God, that you bless our gathering. Bless our fellowship. 
Lord, let the oil of gladness flow from the throne of grace. Let it touch every head, every bed, every skirt, O oh God. Let it touch and affect every aspect of our life. We bless you because we know you are great. We are, you are good. And your mercies endure forever. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, precious God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And let the saints say a big amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Let me hear you say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the Day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice in the Lord. Come on, rejoice, rejoice in the Lord, in the Lord. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad. This is the hour. This is the hour that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. And be glad this is the man that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. Rejoice, rejoice in the Lord, in the Lord. Come and rejoice, rejoice in the Lord, in the Lord, the Lord. I will rejoice.
is a month of celebration is a month of peace is a month of joy nothing will stop your joy come on you can do better than that hallelujah hallelujah celebrate jesus celebrate Join me sing, celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. Come on, let's celebrate, 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 Jesus. Sing, celebrate, 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 Jesus, celebrate. Come on, let's celebrate. You know how we're celebrating? He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. And he lives forever, forevermore. He is risen. He is risen. Risen. Come on, come on and celebrate. Come on and celebrate. Come on and celebrate. I will celebrate. Come on and celebrate. Come on, come and celebrate. The resurrection, the resurrection of our God. Come on, let's say this together. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. I will celebrate, celebrate, Jesus, celebrate, 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 come on, let's celebrate, Jesus, celebrate, I will, we will celebrate, Jesus, celebrate, for he is risen, he is risen. in the land hallelujah it's a revival that is going on right now wherever you are there is a revival going on whatever city that you are located right now there is a sound of rejoicing there is a sound of restoration there is a sound of revival going on and the Bible promises us that there will be revival in our lives in our city in our nation hallelujah are you ready to declare to your land to your city that there is a revival hallelujah there's gonna be a revival in the land there's gonna be a revival in the land oh from the north from the north north south south east and the west there's gonna be a revival there's gonna be there's gonna be a revival there's gonna be where in the you ready are you sure you get it i see revival coming 
I see revival happening. Hallelujah. Because we know that we have a God that sits upon the throne and make the earth is restored. Hallelujah. There's going to be a revival in my life. There's going to be, there's going to be a revival in my life. From the north, from the north, north, south, east, and the west. There's going to be, there's going to be a revival. Oh 
sing praise and exalt his name one more time sing praise him here to praise and exalt his name forever hallelujah our God is faithful our God is great he is mighty he is excellent in all his ways hallelujah that goes to tell us that he can be trusted he can be trusted he is dependable hallelujah let us bless the name of the Lord tonight and worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Holy is our God. Thank you, Jesus. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy are you, Lord, all creations, they call you God. Worthy is your name. We worship your majesty. Awesome God, how great thou art. You are God, and mighty are your miracles. Stand in awe of your holy name. Lord, I bow and worship. to worship you Lord not for all the things you've done for us but because you God you God all by yourself oh yeah you Lord holy are you Lord all creations all
of our peace, of our joy, and of our tranquil. We bless you, Lord. You are the bridge over trouble the waters. Lord, we have every cause to glorify your name. If not for your grace, if not for your mercy, Lord, we will not stand today. We are here because you have made it so. name we've worshipped. Amen. We bless your holy name. Grateful for all that you do. Grateful for who you are. Grateful for the joy you bring. Grateful for the peace that we find in you. Thank you, faithful Father. Thank you mighty King. Thank you. Gracious God. We bless you. We honor you. We adore you. We give you all the glory. And we give you all the praise. In Jesus mighty name we worship in Jesus mighty name we worship wherever you are tonight just give God a shout of adoration shout hallelujah wherever you are tonight shout hallelujah a bigger hallelujah a louder hallelujah amen we thank you Jesus for all that you do in righteousness it is my joy and my pleasure to come to your viewing today at such a time like this and wherever you have joined us across the face of the earth it is my pleasure to come into your abode it is my pleasure to come into your dwelling it is my pleasure to come into your space and I have the privilege of inviting you to join me in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Let us come into this sacred space where God is glad to meet with us, to bless us into his presence. Where we can be satisfied with the fullness of his house. My prayer for you tonight is that even as we have come before him, you will enjoy the benefit of the presence of God in Jesus' name. Glory be to Jesus.
tonight, I would just like us to go into the word of God and to go into the book of John chapter 15. If we go into the book of John chapter 15. I will read this evening from verse 1 to 8. John chapter 15, verse 1 to 8. And my choice of scripture will be the New International Version. John chapter 15 from verse 1. Please give me a moment. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in the vine. In me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit showing yourselves to be my disciples. Praise the Lord. This is a familiar scripture that um, we have all at one point or at one time in our journey as a Christian we would have uh, encountered this scripture maybe by personal study or through a message like the one you are listening to tonight. And we understand that Jesus Christ, as he has said from this scripture, is the vine and we are the branches. And he made it so clear that Without him, we are unable to do anything. Very simplistic statements that is intended to help our understanding, settle our philosophy in the clarity and the simplicity of intention. The identities involved were clarified. The roles involved were clarified. The intent expected was clarified. Everything was clarified in this simple scripture. And so tonight, I want to ask a question. What type, sorry, are you a fruitful branch? What type of branch are you? A fruitful branch or an unfruitful branch so are you a fruitful branch that is what we want to ask tonight 
There are times when we talk about a subject and we go over it and go over it. And it looks as though we labor ourselves in that one concept or counsel. The need may arise to do this because it is very crucial. It is very crucial. And if we are not achieving what is demanded and expected, of that scripture, of that will or counsel of God, it then becomes uh, our responsibility as his children, as his chosen ones, to exercise ourselves to achieve these goals or to fulfill those scriptures. So tonight I want to ask you, are you a fruitful branch? Let us look at that scripture again. Jesus Christ says that, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. Clarifying roles. That means there could be some other vines that are not true vines. That means there are surrogate vines. There are vines that present themselves as alternative vines. We've heard of alternative truths. Jesus Christ said, I am the true vine. It started with a simple identity. I am the true vine. So if you are planted anywhere and you are not planted in Jesus, if you are connected anywhere and you are not connected in Jesus, then you are not connected at all. You are connected to the wrong thing. You are connected in the wrong space. You are connected to the wrong system. The system that you are connected to must be the true system. Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except by me. There are these simple, clear statements that Jesus has made and the world is struggling with it. Some of us are struggling with it because the option is so simple, so clear that it seems to not satisfy the complexity of our desire and the complexity of our minds. I am the true vine. There could never be any other clearer statement. I am the vine and I am the true one. Anybody that attaches or seeks to attach themselves to any other system, anyone that finds life through any other means other than me has a false life because if it is no longer true, then it is false. So there are false vines all around. It says, and my father is the gardener. So he clarified the role. So that we are clear. God is the gardener. He is accountable for the life of the vine. He is responsible for the life of the vine. He ensures that the vine is catered for. He ensures that the vine has all it needs to thrive. You cannot make Jesus. You could not have made Jesus succeed. But God did. The same way God made Jesus to succeed, the same way Jesus is committed for you, committed to you to make you succeed. I am the true fine. I, my father, is the gardener. Verse 2. It cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, it prunes so that it will be more fruitful. He cuts off every branch. So Jesus is saying, I am the vine. I have an assignment. My father is the vine dresser. He has an assignment. He is the one accountable. He is the one that brings about the fruitfulness. It is his work to bring increase. He does the work of increase. 
So every branch that bears fruit, he will prune it so that it will be much more, more fruitful, so that it will have increase. Jesus said, you are clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. It says, neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. It took all of those steps of laying the premises. Of laying the arguments for his final submission. He says, I am the vine. My father is the gardener. He prunes in order to achieve increase. He then said, there are other parts of me that I must describe. And that is the branch that my father has to work on. The father does not work on the vine. He works on the branches. Are you, very, are you seeing this? The father does not work on the vine. He is working on what? The branches. He says he prunes it so that it can bear much more fruit. So that it can be more fruitful. He says there is no branch. There is no branch that can be fruitful except it is part of me. So it's either it grew from me or it was grafted into me. Whichever way, it must form itself and mold itself and attach itself permanently to me. Are you a fruitful branch. Verse 5. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I remain in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do remain in me, verse 6, you are like a branch that is thrown away. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and with us. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. Leaves drop of the tree with seasons. Branches remain attached most of the time until it is broken. It had dead branches. Or intentionally cut branches. Branches remain attached. To the main stem of the plant. Until it is cut. Until it is with us. Until it breaks. So the first thing that comes to my mind is why would Jesus Christ why would Jesus Christ be so emphatic to say you must remain in me you can just picture a plant in your mind's eye many of you have come in contact with many plants in your life You have come in contact with many plants in your life. And you will discover, you will be, you, you agree with me. The branches stay on the plant. In order for you to take the branch, to break the branch, to cut the branch off from the main plant, you have to exercise some fault. I mean, your, some force. How is it that Jesus Christ now has to challenge us, encourage us to remain in him? Why does Jesus Christ want us to remain in him? Why is it that Jesus Christ wants us to remain in him? So that we don't get cut off. Look at verse 6 again. Verse 6. If you do not remain in me, You are like a branch that is thrown away 
and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. Before that happens to the branch, before a branch can tear itself away from the main plant, the branch must have closed its door internally against every life juice, against every life sustaining uh, nutrient that is coming from the plant itself. Because if the plant is visibly alive, but the branch is dead, that means there's something in the branch that has taken place, that has shut off, cut off every source of life that is coming into the branch. But every branch that does not cut off the juice, the nutrient that is coming from the main vine, even when you cut it, it will grow again. It will heal itself where it has been cut and it will board somewhere else. It will bring life from somewhere else. That is why when the time for pruning comes and you have a tree and you get the tree surgeons to come and they cut it, they prune it. What does the tree do? It brings out branches all over again. All those places that have been cut will dry, will heal, but then they will push. They will push life out again. Child of God, many times we disconnect ourselves from God. We disconnect ourselves from Jesus. And there's no way we can know that we are disconnected except when we are not bearing fruit. It is when we are not bearing fruit that is when it becomes evident to us that we are disconnected because the juice that brings life, the juice that brings fruitfulness, the juice that brings increase is no longer flowing. When God created us into the role of a branch, it is so that we can bear fruit. It is so that we can bear fruit, give benefit. It is so that we can bear fruit and give benefit. Are you bearing fruit? Let's look at a scripture. Psalms 80. Let's look at verse 8 to 18. Psalms 80. Let's read from verse 8 to 18. I'm reading from the KJV. It says, Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt. Thou hast cast out the heathen and planted it. Thou preparest room before it. And this caused it to take deep root and it filled the land. The hills were covered with the shadow of it, and the boughs thereof were like the goodly cedars. She sent out her boughs unto the sea, and her branches unto the river. Why hast thou then broken down her edges, so that all they which pass by the way do pluck her? The boar out of the food doth waste it, and the wild beast of the field doth devour it. Return, we beseech thee, O God of hosts, look down from heaven, and behold, and visit this vine. And the vineyard which thy right hand hath planted, and the branch that thou madest strong for thyself. It is burned with fire. It is cut down. They perish at the rebuke of thy countenance. 
Let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand, upon the son of man whom thou madest strong for thyself. So will not we go back from thee. Quicken us, and we will call upon thy name. Hallelujah. Every branch that does not receive juice from the vine will die. Every branch that does not receive juice from the vine will wither. Every vine, every branch that does not receive juice from the vine will not bear fruit. When fruitfulness is stopped, withering will start and death will be the result. And when that happens, the Bible is saying that it is fit for nothing but to be plucked away. It falls down. It crashes. It is dead branches that men will look for and pluck and pull down so that they can burn when they need to generate it for themselves. Child of God, if you look at that scripture, God will always secure you. Psalms 80. He says, He is able to secure you. He can plant you. He can give you deep roots. He can make you to be engrafted. God can walk you into a place of security. God can walk you into a, sp into a place of stability. Into a place of assurance. If you remain connected to him. Remaining connected to him is about having a passion and a desire for everything that he desires so that the connection, the channels are connected. The channels for flow. You must be connected to the vine in a way that you can receive juice. How are you connected? When you don't connect very well, he says, look at verse 9 of that scripture. He says, you prepared room before it and you caused it to take deep root and fill it with the land. Every time God connects you, he wants you to take deep root inside of him. He wants you to be so deep rooted in him that nothing is able to take you away. Nothing is able to separate you from the love of Christ. God wants us to be deep rooted in him. Jesus went further in Matthew 13. He explained to us that the seed that falls among the rocky places, he says it will spring, but because it does not have root within itself, it cannot endure. Because of offense, it will shift position. The only reason why we disconnect from God is offense. <laughs> The only reason why we disconnect from God is offense. The only reason why you disconnect from people is offense. The only reason why you disconnect from what God has connected you to is offense. When you get offended in God, the Jews will not flow anymore. When you get offended in God, the Jews will not flow anymore. Many of us have found ourselves in this position. Many of us have experienced this. We become disappointed in God. We become disappointed with God. We become silently angry and rebellious. We turn the shoulder away from him. We become ah, frustrated and exhausted. We become disillusioned. Hear me, child of God. The devil will give every opportunity to create offense in us because he knows that that is the only thing that can turn you away from God when you become offended in God. 
And it's so subtle. Adam did not realize it. The reason why Adam ate the fruit was because he was offended with God for that one fruit that he didn't get. Just that one fruit. That one thing that God did not do. That one thing that, he didn't, that didn't happen for him the way he wanted it. It made him get offended in God. Job said that he hid his sin in his bosom. Job says, I did not hide my sins in my bosom like Adam. Adam hid his sin in his bosom. He was offended in God. Oh, how I wish you get me what I'm saying to you tonight. Because it is about the simplicity and the clarity of the word. How can a branch remain? Why would the, 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 the plant beg a vine to remain in it? Because the vine is still giving the juice. It's still giving everything that brings life. All things that pertain to life and godliness. God has given unto us. Don't be offended in God. Once offense, frustration, discouragement sets in between you and God. The devil has an opportunity. Because that is what he wants, a separation between you and God. That's what the devil wants. He wants us to be separated from our God. He wants us to be isolated from our God because that's the only way death will happen. That's the only way we will not bear fruit. Once we are separated from God, God said in Isaiah 59, he says that it is our sins that separate us from him. Our, when you take offense against God, that is the sin. Lucifer took offense against God because he couldn't understand how God was handling his system and so he wanted to do something better. He took offense. Wow. John the Baptist sent to Jesus Christ. Are you the one that we are expecting or should we expect somebody else? And Jesus sent the disciples back to him and said, go and tell John. The lame are walking, the blind can see, the dumb are speaking, the deaf are hearing, but blessed is the man who is not offended in me. The only way you will not get disconnected from the vine, Jesus is the vine, the only way you will not get disconnected if you do not allow anything to cause offense for you. Before God. Many of us have been in relationships. Relationships with our siblings, with friends, colleagues. And you will realize that every relationship can be sweet until offense. Until offense happens. Offense is the barrier to fruitfulness. You cannot flourish. You cannot benefit from everything that the environment, the community, the plant, wherever you have been planted, you cannot benefit from it except you do not allow offense. Let me bring something into it. You know, when, when there is conflict and we are upset with somebody, there's a breakdown of communication. There's a, there's a, uh, there's a war that is erected. There is a turning of the back. All of these things happen. And so we, ex we, we experience a, a, a uh, how, how will I describe, describe this? The, the, there, there, is, there is a gap. There is a void. There is an emptiness. All of those things take place sometimes without our awareness in our relationship with God.
The devil tries to make us discouraged, disillusioned. The devil amplifies and exaggerates events to paint God in a bad light. The devil tries to confuse us so that we do not have a clear faith position. But I love a man like Job. He says, I know my redeemer and leave it. And that it will stand on the last day. He says, I know that my redeemer leave it. And it will stand for me. It will stand on my behalf. On that last day, at that last moment, it will be there standing for me. He says, though my flesh warm doth consume. He says, but yet in this my flesh as I see God, whom I shall see face to face with my own eyes. Hear me, child of God. We cannot afford to let offense hinder our fruitfulness. What am I establishing today? Jesus says that in verse 6 of John chapter 15. He says, listen, except you remain in me, Except you remain in me. If you do not remain in me. So there is something that you and I must do. To ensure that we remain. In Jesus. What can separate us from the love of Christ? Death, peril. Pain, shame. Failure. Disappointment. What can separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing. I pray nothing will separate us from the love of Christ. But you are the only one that can answer that question. Because that which separates from the love of Christ is that which brings death and unfruitfulness eventually. So, if you do not remain in me, John 15 verse 6, you will then become a branch that is thrown away. Broken off. It will wither and such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire and they are burned. Verse 7. If you remain in me, hallelujah, and my words remain in you, Everything you need to be fruitful, as you ask it, you'll be getting it. When there's one nutrient that is not enough, you ask for it, you will get it. When you want to, when you want to bring out board, you will ask for the nutrient that bring board. When you want to bring out flower, you will ask for the nutrients that bring forth flower. When you want to bring forth another new tender branch, you will ask for the resources that bring tender branch, and you will get it because you have remained in me. Because you are remaining in me, you have made sure that you are remaining in me. He says the same way I am making sure I remain in the Father. This is the same way I'm making sure I remain in the Father. On your own. I will encourage you to read Ezekiel 31. On your own, read Ezekiel 31. It's a deep scripture. Intersecting on several layers. Connecting with the things that happened in Eden. And the pride of Lucifer. And then using it allegorically to refer to the king of Egypt. But read it. Read the context of it. So I've, I've given you uh, um, pointers. The stated physical character is the king of Pharaoh. I mean the king of Egypt, Pharaoh. <laughs> but God was in reference to Lucifer. And his pride in the garden of God, in the garden of Eden. And how he was brought down. Because it was a tree that was planted with the height that no other tree could have. And because he missed it. Unfortunately, in that scripture, no other tree was granted the opportunity to reach that height. 
That's why we need to be careful some of the things that we do. Because it has impact on others that will come after us. But let's stay on, on track. Jesus says, if you remain in me, so it is my business to ensure that I remain. And the only way I can remain in him is to ensure that I remove everything that will block my attachment. When a layer is forming between me and Jesus Christ, I make sure that I remove the layer. It is my responsibility. That's what Jesus Christ is saying. It is my responsibility to remain in him. If you remain in me and I remain in you, if we remain connected, if you don't allow offense to separate you from me, Says you will ask for what you wish, and it shall be done for you. He says, Because it is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves as my disciples. Hallelujah. Are you a fruitful branch? What does God expect when he talks about fruitfulness? Jesus advised us to examine and analyze the fruits that we see in ourselves. And his analysis, you will see from verse 16 of John 15. His analysis is that he expected us to bear fruits that will remain. Fruits that will endure. So there, there, there are expectations on our productivity. So the question we want to be asking ourselves, if we are a fruitful branch, what type of fruit are we bearing? Is it the fruit that we should be bearing? So if you are a mango branch, and you are producing oranges, something is wrong. If you are what else? If you are a mango branch and you are producing oranges, something is wrong. So that was why Jesus Christ says you don't gather figs from thistles. So when we are when you are bearing fruit, the first thing God wants us to examine, what kind of fruit are you bearing? Is it the fruit that we expect to see of your kind of branch? Are you a fig tree bearing pineapple or bearing oranges or prune? Are you a minister bearing the fruit of an unbeliever? Do you get it? Are you a pastor bearing the fruit of a new convert? That's what Jesus is asking us. What kind of fruit are we bearing? That's the first thing we need to examine. The fruit that we are bearing must match the kind of branch that we are. It must match for to whom much is given, much is expected. It must match. Secondly, if it is the right type of fruit from the right type of branch, question is, is it fit for purpose? Is it good? Does it represent its kind well? So, if I'm bearing the fruit that you expect of a pastor, does it Give a good account. Do I give a good account of the steward of God? Of the, of the steward of the mysteries of heaven? Do I give a good account? Can you look at my fruit? Yes, you can see that, okay, I, I show evidence that I'm a pastor. But is it the kind of fruit that will speak well of the pastorate? Would you look at me and desire to be a pastor? Will somebody look at you and desire to be a minister? 
Will somebody look at you and desire to be a Christian? Does it represent its kind well? And does it bring joy? Because the fruit of our ministry must be visible. There must be witnesses to it. Others must be able to attest to it. You must have a good report of those that are without <laughs> and those that are within. You must have a good report. So it must give benefit and it must add value. Thirdly, the fruit that I am bringing, the fruit that God is seeing in me, the fruit that others can see in me, can it be attractive enough to, add, to attract God's investment? Can God invest in this? The way I'm living my life now, can God invest in it? Your life, my life, are investment opportunities. Would God invest in me? Would God invest in you? Your fruit, the result of our ministry, of our life, of our Christianity, would God invest in it? Is it sufficient? The capacity of your growth is it sufficient to carry the burden of a generation in Luke 9 23 Jesus Christ says that if any man will come to me he says let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me very profound and simple statement if any man will come to me let him deny himself. When all our life, all our prayer, all our Christianity is about how we shall live a comfortable life. We are not denying ourselves. When all our prayer is focused on ourselves, all our Christianity, all the power of God we want to see is to just do our own, make us happy, make us comfortable, make our life be at peace. If that's all, we are not denying ourselves. Jesus Christ says, you cannot, become, you cannot be fruitful that way. You cannot be fruitful that way because that way will bring offense. You will become disappointed because I won't do it. I won't do that. And then you will become offended. You will get distracted. You will get led away by the lost. You get led away by the attraction of the world. It's just as simple. He says, you must first deny yourself. Make yourself a viable venture for God so that God can invest in your life. He says, and then you must take up your cross daily. <laughs> I love that one. That is one of the scriptures that I love. Most of us carry crosses that we don't want to die upon. <laughs> Jesus carried his own cross and died on it. He died for a generation. He died for you and he died for me. There is a cross for you to carry. And that's it. And that is where God invests himself in. God invested himself in resurrecting Jesus Christ from the dead. Woo! I love that. The power of life went into the grave to bring Jesus out. That's an investment. And that's the same thing God wants to do with you and in your life. So the question, the third question is, 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 is your life, your ministry, your work with God, is it worth investing? Would God look at it that you have gone away from self-involvement? Self, um, uh, self Are you someone that is focused on bringing the joy, grace, and salvation of God? To your own world. These are the things that God will invest in. Those are the things that fruitfulness is all about. So that when we are asking, we are asking in order to be fruitful the way God wants us to be fruitful. So what am I saying to us tonight? Are you a fruitful branch? It is the desire of God that we shall be fruitful. In order to be fruitful, we have to remain in Christ. 
the only reason why we cannot remain in Christ is offense. When offense sets in, it creates a layer between us and our God. It creates a layer. Offense, discouragement, disillusionment. It creates a layer. And the more that layer persists, the less nutrient will come into our life progressively. And there will be no fruitfulness. There will be no flourishing. There will be withering. There will be a drying up. And there will be a breaking away. Paul said that Jesus Christ will not come except there is a falling away yet. I pray you will not be part of the falling away in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make you a fruitful branch. The Lord make your branch a joy of many generations. That is the joy of God. That is the desire of God. He wants you to be a fruitful branch. The road to it involves your commitment. Involves all of your heart and your spirit. My prayer is that your heart will not be disillusioned. Your heart will not be offended. You will not be discouraged in God. You will not be disappointed with God. Your race, your situation, your life will not discourage you in God. But you will find strength and you will find grace. You will find peace. You will find understanding. And you will remain attached and committed. And you will remain in him. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Let's just begin to thank God for his words tonight. Let's begin to pray that nothing will separate us from the love of Christ. Just begin to pray that prayer that nothing will separate you from the love of Christ. Anything that the devil is bringing, any lie of the devil that is seeping there, everything that comes and, 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 and presents itself as a veil between your life and God, between your relationship and God, between your love and God, begin to pray that nothing shall separate you from God. Let the veil be torn apart. Let all the, the filters be removed let the filter be removed let the barrier be removed let the partition be removed because jesus christ died that he may take away the partition that separated us he took the partition away nailed it onto his own cross he nailed it onto his cross so that you might have access to god so that i might have access to god tonight we pray that there'll be a joining of the spirit and our will before the unction and the commitment and the commandment of heaven in the name of jesus that our soul and our spirit will unite will unite before the commandment and the will of heaven your spirit and your soul will be united in the will of god the lord god will unite your spirit with his will your the lord god will unite your soul with his will in the mighty name of jesus father we thank you we bless your holy name. Let's equally pray for all of our relationships that are suffering from offense. Let's just pray that God will ease the hearts of men that god will heal our wounds that every partition every breakdown that is a result of offense let the lord god heal that wound let the lord god heal that relationship let the lord god heal that wound let the lord god heal that relationship father tonight we pray for every relationship that is suffering because of offense, we pray that Lord, you will heal the wound. Lord, 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 heal the wound. In the name of Jesus, I pray the healing power of God over you, the mercy of God over your life and your relationships. I pray over you and your relationship with God that it shall be mended. It shall be mended. It shall be mended. It shall be mended in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. Be magnified forever and ever in Jesus' mighty much less than we pray and all the saints say a big amen shout hallelujah shout hallelujah shout a bigger hallelujah glory be to god amen and amen thanking god for his mercies and for his goodness and thanking him for his grace hallelujah just before we go tonight i just want to invite you to take an offering with me in this service as we worship god hallelujah it is our joy always when we come into the presence of god to worship him with our substance to worship him with our uh money <laughs> hallelujah not because god wants it but because it is a form of worship for us as we give unto the name and the glory of god all right wherever you are tonight if you're watching from youtube or from uh facebook you are able to go onto our website on www.tremfulam.org.uk and you can give your offering in this way if you're already watching from our website 
by clicking the button uh, below your screen you are able to give your offering that way that donate button below your screen and if you are watching from our church app there is that menu button on the top left hand corner of your screen if you click it it will take you to the page where you are able to give your offering and if you would like to pay directly into our bank account those are the details on the screen at this moment even as i pray in the name of jesus we thank you for our offerings that we bring before you tonight father we ask that you will bless our offerings lord we release this for the work of righteousness and for the work of the kingdom we ask that it will prosper in that which we have sent it. We ask that it will bring harvest of joy and peace and gladness into our lives and into our homes. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that this offering we are given tonight will save a life, will save a family, will save a community, will save a nation, oh God. will turn things around for someone who is on the brink of death. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bless your holy name and we give you praise. In Jesus' much less name, we are afraid amen and somebody shout hallelujah hallelujah glory be to god all right it's been a pleasure to um spend this time with you in the presence of god and i believe that you have been blessed and i look forward to see you again on sunday morning at 10 a.m on this same channel as we come together to celebrate jesus we we'll look forward to see you then the lord keep you command his face to shine upon you and sustain you by his mercy in jesus name i look forward to see you let's share the grace in the fellowship the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen and surely god's goodness and mercy shall abide with us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen the lord bless you real good have a wonderful night shalom